Welcome to this tutorial on CPT 20610 Billing Scenarios. The information given in this training is correct as of February 2021. The most current information related to this topic can be found on Noridian and CMS websites at the links listed on this slide. There are different ways this CPT code can be billed and this depends on multiple injection sites and whether ultrasound guidance was used. The modifiers that'll be used in each of these scenarios are very important to receive proper payment as well as ensuring proper billing. First, we need to go to the fee schedule indicator listing. On the Noridian website, select the fees and news tab at the top of the page. That takes us to the fees and news page. Go to the left side and select fee schedules. On this page, select MPFS or Medicare Physician Fee Schedule. Select MPFS indicator list and descriptors when the new window opens, select Indicator List PDF. The document will open and scroll down until you find the code you're interested in and look for the indicators under M for multiple or B for bilateral. So here we see under M Indicator 2 and under B Indicator 1. On another note, in the global or GLB column, we see 000. Then go back to the previous screen and select MPFS indicator descriptions. Under M or multiple surgery, if the indicator is two, multiple surgery rules apply and allowance is based on 100% for the first code and 50% for the second. B is for bilateral and the indicator is one. Indicator one says bilateral surgery rules apply. Use modifier 50 and the allowance is 150%. So that means billing either way has the same end result. Then the next place to look is to the National Correct Coding Initiative or NCCI webpage on the CMS website. We need to look at the medically unlikely edit file Here's a snapshot of the section of the MUE table for CPTs 20610 and 20611. The MUE value for both codes is 2 and the MUE adjudication indicator is 3. Date of service edit, that means that two injections with these CPT codes are the most that can be billed on a single date. Now let's go through different scenarios, what or cannot be billed, and which modifier to use. So starting with the 20610 service, and the provider wants to bill for an office visit. In this first scenario, an established patient comes in complaining of a pain in his knee. The doctor looks at the patient's knee and knows instantly that this patient has had this before and informed him that an atherosynthesis injection is needed and proceeds. If the injection is performed on the same day as the established patient visit, since the doctor has seen this patient before, a significant separately identifiable service was not done to determine a need for the procedure and an office visit should not be billed. However, if this was a new complaint, the physician may need to do a complete system evaluation to determine if there wasn't a fracture or if a brace would work before determining an arthrocentesis was the best way to go. Then an office visit can be billed and a modifier 25 needs to be appended. Be careful here to make sure that there's a medical need to do this complete assessment. Don't do it just to bill for the office visit. Remember, when deciding if the visit can be billed, the history, exam, and medical decision-making had to be done. 
The documentation should include that this was a new complaint by an established patient. It should also reflect the evaluation and management or E&M service was a significant, separately identifiable service on the same day as the procedure, and also notate the medical need for the complete evaluation if the visit will be billed. We need to see that the doctor did the history of present illness, examination of the complete assessment, and the medical decision to do the procedure. Also remember that when the fee schedule was developed starting in 1992, the allowance for the visit was bundled into each of the minor procedures, so providers are already getting paid for the visit in the 20610 allowance when not doing the history exam and medical decision making. Now in this second scenario, the patient was told to return for another injection for the same condition. Since the reason for the visit was previously established, the E&M service is bundled into the procedure. No E&M service is billed. Physicians are saying that although the patient is coming back for another injection, they need to evaluate before doing the arthrocentesis, and this is fine. However, it cannot be billed separately. According to the Medicare guidelines, the E&M cannot be billed separately charged because it's already been established that a second injection was going to be done. The evaluation taking place before the procedure is minor and already included in the minor procedures. So unless there's a significant separately identifiable service rendered, a visit should not be charged separately. In this scenario, the doctor is seeing a new patient that was referred by another physician because the patient was complaining of pain and swelling of the knee. If an injection is performed on the same day as a new patient visit, modifier 25 is not necessary as the new patient visit codes are excluded from the global package. However, even on a new patient visit, if the physician can determine what the problem is without doing a complete total evaluation, then a charge for the visit should not be billed. However, like in scenario one, if this is a new patient and just by looking at it, the doctor thought he might need to do an x-ray to determine if there was a fracture or if a brace would work before resorting to an arthrocentesis, then maybe a new patient visit can be charged. If a visit is going to be charged, the documentation should include that it was a new patient and an evaluation was necessary to determine the need for a procedure and the reason why the evaluation was necessary. Just because it was a new patient is not a reason why a total body evaluation is needed. Is a total evaluation needed or can the doctor determine on viewing the knee? This is how it should be billed if the doctor did a problem-focused history, problem-focused exam, and straightforward medical decision-making. As a new patient, this code does not need a modifier 25. In scenario four, the patient returned for a second arthrocentesis of the right knee, but is also now complaining of pain in the left knee. The doctor wants to bill for a lower level e &M visit because the patient was evaluated for the left knee pain. If the injection is performed on the same day as the established patient visit, since the doctor has seen the patient before, a significant separately identifiable service was not done to determine a need for a procedure, so an office visit should not be billed. However, the patient is now also complaining of pain in his other knee, and the physician takes a look at the knee and assesses that it's the same as the other knee. Since it's a new complaint, can a modifier 25 be appended to the 99212 or should the physician not even be billing for this visit? The answer is this visit should not be billed because it is the same condition in the left knee and allowance for the visit was bundled into minor procedures. So providers are already getting paid for the visit in the 20610 allowance when not doing the history exam and medical decision making. Be careful here. Make sure that there's a medical need to do a complete assessment. Don't just do it to bill for the office visit. Some physicians feel that if the patient comes into his office, he can just bill for the visit. 
Remember this when deciding if the visit can be billed. The history, exam, and medical decision making had to have already been done. The documentation should include that this was a new complaint by an established patient. It should also reflect that the evaluation and management service was a significant separately identifiable service on the same day as the procedure and also notate the medical need for the complete evaluation if planning to bill for the visit. Documentation needs to include the history of the present illness, examination of the complete assessment, and the medical decision to do the procedure. Now we're getting to how to bill when doing more than one arthrocentesis on one day. So in scenario five, the physician needs to perform an arthrocentesis on both the right shoulder and the left knee. If the doctor did two joint injections, one injection was to the right shoulder and the other injection was to the left knee, modifiers RT and LT can be used. In scenario six, the physician performed an arthrocentesis on the right shoulder and the right knee. Modifier RT needs to be appended to both lines, but another modifier is needed. If the doctor did two joint injections, one to the right shoulder and the other to the left knee, modifiers RT and LT can be used, but in this case, it's both on the same side of the body. But if it's billed the way it's shown here, then the line two will deny as a duplicate. The better way is to show both on one line with the number of units as two. Make sure the documentation shows the location of each injection. What if it was on the right shoulder and the left shoulder? That can be billed with modifier 50 and on one line with the number of units as one. This is only if the injections were to the same body organ or area. Modifier 50 pays automatically at 150%, so the allowance would be the same as if billed without modifier 50 and the number service as one. Moving on to scenario seven. If the surgeon aspirates a joint and then injects the same joint, only one CPT 20610 should be billed. Code 20610 encompasses both the aspiration and injection. These cannot be billed as two separate procedures. Now in scenario eight, if the two injections are administered on the same joint, only one 20610 code should be billed. For example, two injections were administered to the right shoulder. The documentation for this should include a signed consent, anatomic location, preparation of the site, local anesthetic administered, name and dosage of the drug administered, patient reaction, and all postoperative instructions related to the minor surgical procedure. Here we have resources available to providers. First, refer to the NCCI table and MUEs for help with billing. We have modifier billing guides on our website located under browse by topic slash modifiers. Finally, refer to the descriptions and instructions provided in the CPT AMA manuals. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. Continue your learning experience by referring to additional recordings available on the Noridian website or YouTube channel.